Hi guys, welcome back to my kitchen. Today we are going to be focused on preserving grapes. So we harvested 85 pounds of green grapes this morning. Our red grapes are not quite ready yet. They're still a few weeks out. And I am trying to utilize these as best I can. In previous years, admittedly, we have not done the best job with them. So I am going to be making a bunch of grape juice. That is gonna, gonna be my focus with them. And then I'll probably end up filling up one, maybe both of the dehydrators to make some raisins as well. But I do have some raisins left over from last year. So it's already 3.30 in the afternoon. I am hoping that I can get this all dealt with today, but it's Sunday and I have my normal weekly things to get done. So we're just gonna see how the day plays out. So I've just filled up my sink with cold water and I'm giving these a good rinse to get any dirt and bugs off. And then I'm going to be removing them from the stems and adding them into my big stainless steel roasting pan. I don't have a steam juicer, so this is how I make juice. And purchasing a steam juicer is something that I am really on the fence about. I'm not sure that I want another piece of equipment that I only use for a couple months of the year that I have to store. And honestly, this is pretty easy to do. But if you do have a steam juicer, let me know how you feel about it. So I have my roasting pan filled with grapes now, and I am just gonna go through with my potato masher, give them a bit of a mash, and then we will cover them with water. As you're mashing the grapes, you're gonna notice that they release quite a bit of juice. So it's really not going to be very much water that we actually cover them with, and it's going to make a very concentrated grape juice. So this is about a three gallon roasting pan and I've got about 22 pounds of grapes in there, which is one of the four boxes that I have. So this is going to take four rounds and the actual juice making process is not that labor or time intensive. It's just um, removing the grapes from the stems that takes a while. So it's becoming very evident to me that I am not going to get this done tonight which is fine. I think what I'm gonna do is just try and get as many of the grapes cleaned up and then ready to go in the fridge so I can finish them off tomorrow. Once the grape mixture comes to a boil, we are going to reduce the heat down to medium low and allow this to simmer for about 15 minutes before we strain it. Now we're going to strain off the juice. So I just have a stainless steel bowl with a strainer in it and some cheesecloth. And I am just going to do this in batches and then we will get this into some jars. I set a jar just underneath my strainer to make sure that it wasn't sitting directly in the juice that had just strained off. After the juice is strained, it's often recommended to set the juice in the fridge for 24 to 48 hours, which will allow the sediment to settle so it can be removed before canning. 
I skip over that step. So what I did is I brought my juice back up to a boil and at this point, if necessary, you can sweeten it. And then I filled my jars to a quarter inch of headspace and then these will process for 10 minutes in a water bath canner. As always, if you're above a thousand feet of elevation, you're going to want to adjust your processing time accordingly. So I'm going to have three more batches to do following the same process and I am not going to be getting that done today just based on how long it takes for me to remove the grapes from the stems. So I'll be sure to bring you back tomorrow for a final tally of how many quarts we got from that 85 pounds of grapes. We ended up with 28 quarts of concentrated grape juice from 85 pounds of grapes. I chose not to do any raisins this year as we did have some left from last year and I'm finding we aren't going through them quite as quickly as some of the other dried fruit that we do. You'll notice that the juice went into the canner more green in color and came out much more pink and I've read a few different theories on this ranging from oxidization to being due to growing in drought conditions and we did have a very dry spring and summer. If you have thoughts on this, I would love to hear them. Thanks for spending the afternoon with me and my kitchen friends. We will see you in the next video.